Lord Charlie Faulkner, former flatmate of Tony Blair's and really one of the architects in many ways of a political party that won three general elections. When you look at the Labour Party today, do you feel depressed? Are, are there signs of optimism? What I, do feel, you feel? I feel depressed. Uh, I think one of the, what you said in your introduction was absolutely spot on, which is for the government of the day to be good, there's got to be another group who, if this government is bad, can take over straight away. I don't think people felt in the run-up to the election on the 12th of December that the Labour Party could take over straight away. There were too many doubts mm. about the leadership. And we had failed over the previous three years to provide any particular particular clarity about what should happen about the main issue of the day, namely whether we should leave the European Union and if so on what terms. You have to be able to say to the country, they are bad, we have something that we offer that you could accept. And we weren't doing that. That's why I feel depressed about the Labour Party. I don't know what will happen in the leadership election, but we've got a long way back to go at the moment. It's going to yeah. be very difficult. Let's talk a bit about that election. Um, Emily Thornberry dropped out yesterday. There's a big hustings taking place later on today in London. How do you assess the remaining candidates? Uh, first of all, Rebecca Long-Bailey has specifically said she gives 10 out of 10 to Jeremy Corbyn. She is effectively saying, uh, I am the continuity candidate yep. for Jeremy Corbyn. If she wins the leadership election, and she's a perfectly intelligent, decent person. But if she wins the leadership election, we are effectively ceasing to compete for power in the country. Because people will think that if it's a continuation of Jeremy Corbyn, who they have conclusively repudiated, then we are not trying to be in government. Uh, uh, Lisa Nandy has got a lot to say about the fact that we lost touch with uh, the uh, people who had voted Labour uh, yeah. traditionally in the Midlands and in the North in particular. And Keir Starmer is a very big figure who is who is able and competent, who has not defined himself politically yet. He is obviously of the left. He has had a lifetime of effectively uh, pursuing decent left causes as a lawyer. He's obviously a very competent individual who has led the prosecution service, but he is not defined politically. That gives him both an opportunity, but maybe makes him vulnerable to the void being filled by other people. It does look a little, though, with Keir Starmer's campaign that he's beginning to tack a bit to the left. Just some of the statements I've seen him making. I mean, I think back to the 1980s and you know, Neil Kinnock fought really a very brave fight mm -hmm. against the extreme left. It went on for years and years. It was bloody. It was awful. Uh, and in a sense, it paved the way for what Tony Blair was able to do. Uh, a Labour Party very much in a sort of social democratic mould. Uh, people on the right, not fearful of tax rises, all of those things that happen. But is your party now so in the grip of the left that, that even for Starmer to win, he has to tack in that direction. Well, I think there are two things going on. One, I think the way that our party has been led over the last few years has been absolutely disgraceful in a whole number of respects about our values. And the obvious big example of that is anti-Semitism, yeah. which was never properly dealt with and will have to be dealt with very effectively and very quickly.